Hello and welcome to the most wholesome video we will ever make. Today we're going to take a detailed look at the complete fossil gallery in the amazing Natural History Museum in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I admit this video is kind of a wall of information, so if there's a specific part of the museum that you're interested in, check the timestamps in the description and the timeline below to jump around. I really hope you enjoy this. So what I really love about this museum is that every specimen has been laid out on this little tree of life, and this is fantastic because it shows players how ancient animals are roughly related to each other and to living things as well. On our right we have the, frankly, pretty small invertebrate section. I won't lie, the invertebrates are very poorly represented in this museum. There's a lot of paleontologists out there, some of which are actually on this channel, who probably won't be best pleased about this. And we'll start with Anamala caris, otherwise known as the abnormal shrimp. It is a very strange, very early type of arthropod. So as you can see, that's the same group that includes crustaceans, arachnids, and insects, and it lived in the ocean over 500 million years ago. If you look closely, you can see it has these two little hooks or graspers on the front. These would have been used to grab prey, prey such as these trilobites. So like living arthropods, trilobites would also shed their hard outer exoskeleton in order to grow. Unfortunately, that's when they were probably their most vulnerable to predators like our friend Anamalacaris. One of the most important aspects of paleontology is that the fossil record is biased in many ways. You probably already know that organisms with harder body parts are much more likely to be fossilized. So we have loads of fossil trilobites as they have these nice hard exoskeletons. However, softer things like this jellyfish, this is just a model, they aren't going to be captured in the rock record as easily. A really good example of this is the ammonites. As you can see, they belong to the cephalopods, which are the same group as squids and octopus, cuttlefish, and you can find fossils of their spiral shells all over the world in all shapes and sizes, but their soft bodies inside the shells have never been adequately preserved. And then finally, tucked in at the back, there's a little blob of amber, which is formed from a tree sap, which runs down the trunk of a tree and can sometimes capture insects and other small organisms and preserve softer tissue that may not normally fossilize. This one contains a mosquito because, well, you gotta have that Jurassic Park reference, I guess. So I know that most of our videos are about dinosaurs, but on the outside, I actually work on fossil fishes. So this next part is just unbelievably cool. You might not even be able to see it. It's a little smudge, a tiny little fossil on this rock called Milo Conmingia. It's a very bizarre little creature. It also lived around 500 million years ago, quite a while before the kinds of fish you'd recognize today evolved. It's about three centimeters long, it has no jaws, no teeth, but it does have primitive gills, fins, and maybe a very primitive backbone. It might just be one of the first vertebrates that ever lived. I find it really funny that in the real world, we actually only have like one decent fossil of this thing, whereas in Animal Crossing, I've got like three more of these back in my house. Eventually, however, fish acquired a very useful anatomical feature that would go down in the history of evolution, jaws, as well as tough external bony armour as demonstrated beautifully by this huge Dunkleosteus. They lived over 350 million years ago, and again to come back to our theme of just the hard parts preserving, we actually really only have fossils of their big scary armoured skulls, we can only infer what the rest of their bodies look like. They belong to an extinct group of fish called placoderms, but as you can see, they are quite related to the cartilaginous fishes, so that's the same group as living sharks and rays and chimeras, which begs the question, what on earth is this weird spiral thing at the back there? The game calls it a shark tooth pattern, which is close enough. We'd call it a tooth wall. It belonged to an ancient cartilaginous fish called Helicoprion. Like living sharks, the rest of Helicoprion's skeleton was made of cartilage, which is much softer than teeth and bone. So we've never actually found one of these tooth walls attached to the rest of the animal. And as a result, there's been over a century of speculation about what this animal actually looked like. We don't really know. However, we can make an educated guess, and today we're now fairly confident that it grew inside the lower jaw. It's still super weird though, so like uh, living shark teeth are being constantly replaced by new ones, and this spiral would sort of unravel as new teeth grew to replace old ones. 
And then finally, we have this branch of vertebrates, which leads into the next room. So shooting off from the cartilaginous fissures, we have the bony fissures. These are divided into the ray fin fissures and the lobe fin fissures. Eustheneptoron is an extinct lobe fin fish that lived around 380 million years ago. Over 99% of the world's living fishes are actually the ray finned fishes. So these are the ones that have like thin fins made of rays and radials. And though a handful are adapted to a semi terrestrial life, like mud skippers, their fins are relatively very delicate. The lobe finned fishes, on the other hand, had much thicker, bonier limbs that would eventually evolve into the limbs of every four legged backbone animal on Earth, the tetrapods. So that's every amphibian, reptile, bird, and mammal that ever lived is descended from this branch of fish. And if you look at the skeletons of like living lobe fin fishes, like lungfish or the coelacanth, you can actually find the same bones in its fins as in your arm. Along the way, we had some really bizarre stem tetrapods, like Acanthostega. As you can see, it has much more defined arm-like limbs that were potentially capable of taking short trips onto land. This lineage also includes things like Tiktaalik. I'm really glad they actually chose a much more obscure example instead of Tiktaalik. And like I said, this lineage eventually evolves into the tetrapods, which, as you can see, continue into the next room. And here we are. Let me just quickly run over here so you can see the full exhibit. Easily the best fossils and skeletons I've ever looked in a video game. So, as you can see, we've still got a little tree of life here, dividing the tetrapods into several groups. This is brilliant because, for example, these reptiles on our left aren't just bunched right in the middle of the dinosaurs like they actually are in some real museums. So this is an ichthyosaur. And this is a plesiosaur. These are marine reptiles that lived at the same time as dinosaurs, which converged onto very fish-like features like fins and flippers. Because, well, if you're going to evolve to live underwater, these features have been proven to work. This is the same evolutionary process of convergence that gave us mammals like whales and dolphins about 50 million years ago. Which is especially funny now since I just showed you these creatures started out in the water, went onto land, and then back into the water again. <laughs> What's really interesting about ichthyosaurs is you'll notice on this mount that there's no dorsal fin or upper lobe to the tail. Those features did not contain bones, so for a long time, paleontologists did not know they existed until better fossil imprints of their entire bodies were discovered. And then next up is a slightly more obscure marine reptile. This is Archaeleon, one of the largest sea turtles to ever live. Ours at Animal Crossing is 100% complete, all of the bones are here, but one of the most famous specimens that this model is probably based on is actually missing one of its back flippers. It was probably bitten off by a shark or something. Then of course there are the flying reptiles, again not dinosaurs at all, so this is Pterodon, very well known from thousands of well preserved three dimensional specimens, whereas Quetzalcoatlus on the other hand, which is one of the largest flying reptiles, in fact one of the largest flying animals to have ever lived, is only known from a few broken pieces of the wing. Those fragments are so gigantic though, if we were to extrapolate the rest of the skeleton based on more complete pterosaurs, we can see it would have been this colossal giraffe sized flying creature. But one of the joys of Animal Crossing is that, again, every fossil is 100% complete, so here we have a nice, fully articulated fossil. Something I often get asked about is whether skeletons in museums are real. Dinosaur skeletons are often plaster casts of the real bones, which are much too heavy and too delicate to display, so they're kept behind the scenes. But if you're ever unsure, a telltale sign that a dinosaur skeleton is real are these huge metal support frames that like hold up the heavy fossils. So I'm pretty sure these are actually meant to be the real fossil bones on display. If I had to pick a favorite dinosaur, it would have to be one of the sauropods. So this is a Brachiosaurus, ta-da! <laughs> and this is Diplodocus. Sauropods are just fantastic. They were able to grow so large thanks to all sorts of innovations in their anatomy and their behavior. So the Brachiosaurus neck, for example, is lined with these large hollow spaces, making their skeletons surprisingly lightweight compared to the bones of mammals. If you were to suddenly grow to the size of a Brachiosaurus, your bones would probably break under their own weight. But this Diplodocus skeleton makes me so very happy. So this is kind of heresy to say as a fossil fish worker, but Diplodocus is kind of, it's my dinosaur. I helped excavate a Diplodocus out in Wyoming in the United States a few years ago. And what I love is I can actually walk over here and I can see pieces of the vertebra in the tail that I found and took out of the ground and prepped, which is just, it's so cool seeing them in a specimen in a video game. Seriously, the moment that I found the Diplodocus tail when I was digging for fossils in this game was so much fun. Okay, I have been rambling on for way too long, so we're going to zoom through the rest of these dinosaurs really quickly. 
The name Stegosaurus means roofed lizard. This refers to the fact that we used to think their plates came out sideways, creating a flat roof-like top. But like the Ichthyosaur and its dorsal fins, we've since found fossils with the plates preserved in the upright position. Ankylosaurs are very famous for their extremely armoured squat little bodies and their big chunky tail clubs, but what you might not know about their tail clubs that this game shows really well is that the last few tail vertebrae were actually fused together to form a sort of reinforced handle. Iguanodon was the second dinosaur to be formally named a dinosaur in the early 1800s. I use my words very carefully there, it was not the second to be discovered, not by a long shot. Fossils have been found all over the world centuries before guys like Mantell were even born. We're always learning new things about dinosaurs, and just last month, some friends published a new paper in which they found evidence of a neck injury in Parasaurolophus, as though it had been hit by like a falling tree or something. Not only that, but the injury had healed, so clearly the animal survived. However, the way the bone had healed in relation to the injury implied a lot about the soft tissue in the neck, suggesting that it had a totally different appearance from the more classic appearance that you're probably used to, to this more recent interpretation with a much deeper neck, which I think looks really cool. So pachycephalosaurs are always depicted as like slamming their heads against each other, and I think even the most recent Jurassic World film showed it, and um... Yeah, sorry, this is actually very unlikely to have ever happened, and if on the off chance that it ever did happen, they'd probably have both died instantly. This is of course a Triceratops, but on top of that I can give you the species of this Triceratops. I'm fairly confident that this is Triceratops porosus as opposed to Triceratops horridus on account of its very long, pointy, protuberant nose horn. And if we just run around here, of course, it is depicted as fighting the T-Rex, which has been a staple of paleo art and pop culture for decades and decades. What is there to say about T-Rex? I don't even know, like... I mean, technically the Rex should be written with a lowercase r, but that's so petty at this point, does anyone really care? Well actually, one thing that us paleontologists are often accused of is making dinosaurs like T-Rex very boring and less scary, and I don't really think that's fair. So researchers have studied the texture of their skull and found that perhaps they weren't as toothy as we once thought, they probably had more of a lip like uh, monitor lizards, they probably didn't roar as much as they do in the films. Um, Researchers have even simulated how T-Rex would move and found that technically they couldn't actually run. I think to properly run, both feet need to leave the ground at the same time. People just complain about this stuff all the time and I just don't get it. Like, like elephants can't run, right? But I sure as heck wouldn't want one to walk towards me at full speed. J just saying. By the way, everything we've looked at so far is a body fossil. It's a fossil of an animal's body. But these are trace fossils. A trace fossil is basically a fossil of anything an animal could leave behind. Like a burrow, or an eggshell, or a nest, or in this case, a very hefty coprolite, and a footprint. Oh, Spinosaurus. <laughs> Beloved by edgy teens everywhere. What's interesting about this specimen is that almost instantly after the game was released, a new paper rendered this mount actually pretty inaccurate. Spinosaurus was probably much more- Oh, wait, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Hi, uh, Future Jake here. So on the day I plan to upload this video, yet another paper about Spinosaurus came out. So let's just talk about this really quickly, uh, even though there'll probably be another one by the end of the week. So what I was about to say is that just after Animal Crossing was released, a more complete specimen was revealed to have a long, fin-like tail, which is of course not in this game. The authors of that 2020 paper argued that the tail would have made Spinosaurus a highly specialised aquatic predator, but today this is brand new, hot off the press rebuttal, which argues that instead there's much more evidence to support a more semi-aquatic lifestyle sort of wading in the shallows. I'm not saying that this new paper is the correct one, frankly I don't think there's anywhere near enough data to make these huge sweeping speculations about this animal's behaviour at all, but basically Spinosaurus is definitely super weird and had a different mode of life to most other theropods, but it is way too early to know for certain what that lifestyle actually was. Okay, I'll hand you back over to past Jake, <laughs> hate that guy, and just so the next bit makes sense, I ended that segment pretty ironically by talking about how the game developers couldn't have possibly known that this was about to be published. Although on a similar note, this is Deinonychus, another edgy boy, the Jurassic Park Velociraptors, which we moan about all the time, were actually based mainly on Deinonychus skeletons due to a now outdated hypothesis that Deinonychus was a larger species of Velociraptor. You probably know that the real Velociraptor was very small, but the movie raptors ended up being even bigger than Deinonychus anyway. However, by a total coincidence, they were about the same size as Utah Raptor, which just so happened to be discovered while the film was still in production. 
And then finally, this is Archaeopteryx. They are extremely important because they feature both typical dinosaur anatomy, like teeth and a large bony tail, but also some typical birdy anatomy, like feathers and feet that are adapted for perching in trees. It was a monumental discovery in demonstrating that modern birds are the last surviving dinosaurs. A few years ago, researchers were even able to use intense x-rays to detect colour, chemical traces of colour in Archaeopteryx feathers, and they found that despite years of these amazing rainbow depictions, they probably had quite plain dark feathers. Okay, phew, that is the dinosaurs done. Well done for everyone sticking through that. But before we head into the next room, there is one more strand of this tree of life which you need to look at. Along the way is this very curious creature. This is Dimetrodon. They often get mistaken for a dinosaur, but as you can see, it forms its own separate path. They lived in the Permian 40 million years before the first dinosaurs even appeared in the Triassic, and is in fact a type of synapsid. You can tell it's a synapsid by looking very closely at the skull. So this is the like eye socket, or we call it the orbit, and this is a little hole behind the eye which we call a temporal fenestra, an opening in the skull that accommodates muscles. Synapsids have just one opening behind the eye, but if we were to look at, say, um, uh, which one shows it best? The, uh, the Denonychus. So it's a little unclear, but this is the orbit, the eye socket. But if you look up here, you have these two holes on the head, and then there's a second one that comes around here, so the, the muscle would go through here, through these two holes, and then that would run all the way through down to this third opening in the lower jaw. Because it has two of these temporal fenestra, dinosaurs are diapsids, and Dimetrodon is a synapsid. Incidentally, uh, another group of synapsids, human beings, as well as every living mammal alive today. In fact, we're more closely related to Dimetrodon than pretty much anything else in this room, apart from this little guy down here. This is Jeremiah. This is a small rodent-like mammal which actually did live alongside the dinosaurs. Then, as you can see, mammals and also a second strand over there, which we'll get back to in a second, continue on into the next room. But what you'll notice on the way is this little model here. This is, of course, depicting the asteroid impact that wiped out the non-avians, that's the non-bird dinosaurs, 66 million years ago. I actually learned from uh, Thomas, one of our other hosts, the other day, that before the asteroid had even landed, the heat and pressure was so intense that it melted and evaporated the rock in its path, which is just insane. I guess that's what this is depicting here, maybe. And if we quickly run back to that little spot I showed you earlier, you can see in the top a very ominous little Easter egg, which I actually hadn't noticed until I was preparing for this video. As much as I love this room, it is worth noting that, you know, of course, for a game, they're going to include the classic dinosaurs that people are familiar with. T-Rex, Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Diplodocus, and so on. But I need to stress that dinosaurs are much more diverse than this suggests. It is still an ever-evolving field. I don't want you to get the impression that this is literally all we do, which is work on the same dozen dinosaurs. Obviously, there is still so much more to learn about these dinosaurs, and countless more. And unfortunately, there are a lot of dinosaurs which we will sadly never know about, thanks again to the biases in the fossil record. So, we just covered about half a billion years of evolution, but now I'm going to look at the last few fossils before we reach the modern day. So this is of course a woolly mammoth during the Pleistocene, so that's over 11,000 years ago. Mammoth species could be found all across North America and Northern Eurasia. Unfortunately, a rapid change in climate and also primarily human hunting sadly drove them to extinction. However, living elephants tell us a lot about how they would have probably behaved. So for instance, there's a very famous mammoth that was discovered in the UK called the West Runton Mammoth that looked as though the bones had been scattered and moved around. These bones were far too heavy for the nearby stream or scavengers like hyenas to move around, so it's very likely that another mammoth investigated the skeleton just like modern elephants do today. This is a Smilodon, or as they're often called by the game here, a saber-toothed tiger. We actually never really call them that. Even though they are, of course, related to big cats, they actually form a pretty separate branch of felids called the Machairodontidae, which means dagger tooth. Smilodons get a lot of attention compared to other members of this group in popular culture, but I did find a game on Steam recently which features some pretty obscure ones, so we're definitely going to do a video on that soon. I, yeah, I did just use Smilodon to plug a future video, I do apologise. <laughs> Moving on, this is Megacerops. It lived about 35 million years ago or so. It converged on a similar body plan to modern day rhinos, and the game actually does call it a prehistoric rhino, but it's actually much more closely related to modern horses than it is to rhinoceros. Meanwhile, rhinos are actually much more closely related to groups like tapirs, <laughs> which is pretty cool. 
And then finally, our penultimate fossil, this is Megaloceros, also known as the Irish Elk, a giant deer that only went extinct less than 8,000 years ago. They are, they're just gorgeous. They have these three meter wide antlers. They're so cool. I wish I could tell you any more facts about them, but frankly, I just wish they were still around today. They're so cool. Okay, we're nearly done, but before we move on to our final fossil, running along the back wall here, we have silhouettes of all of the different types of animals that villages can be in Animal Crossing. So for instance, this is one of the eagle looking villages. They're related to the theropod dinosaurs in the previous room. Similarly, you can see that the marsupial, so the koala and the kangaroo from their own separate branch, and then this elephant like villager is related to the mammoth. You've got the cat like villagers related to the smilodon, and you can see bears and dogs from their own separate branch. This is such a great way of doing it. However, if you remember what I just said, they've got the horse and the rhino the wrong way around. One star. No, I'm just kidding. It's a very, very petty thing for me to notice. And maybe one day it'll be proven to actually be correct. Who knows? But I do find it pretty interesting. You might not find it interesting. I, I, I find it interesting. Anyway, the final fossil is, of course, -da -da -da, the Australopith or Australopithecus. These are, of course, an early group of hominins which lived over a million years ago in Africa, which are closely related to, if not the actual ancestors of modern day humans. And the game illustrates this in a very adorable way. So if we come up here, we can see there is a blank space. And if we stand in here, the little light comes on. I think this is superb. It's so good. Players can essentially follow this line all the way through the rest of the museum, past the Metrodon, past the Lopefin Fishers. It does such a great job of showing players how they are related to ancient fossil life. And that is incredible, especially given that this is a game primarily about decorating and gardening. It's awesome. And yeah, that about wraps us up. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed putting this together and I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, if you want to see more videos about Animal Crossing, I'm pretty tempted to do a tour of the aquarium. Please do let us know in the comments. That is all from me. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Bye.